The Atlanta Braves obviously had a tremendous decade in the 90s. In addition to their success, the Braves in the 90s became one of the more popular baseball teams and really increased their fan base nationally. A plentiful number of items can be used to talk about and describe these Braves during the decade before the Y2K scare. So for this 90 Sports of Soldier video, I just simply want to make a short list about the top 5 things that come to mind about the Atlanta Braves in the 90s. In at number 5, the 1993 Atlanta Braves. Now I didn't really want to put a specific year on the list, but this 93 team really stands out to me. And it all began with the signing of one of the greatest right-handed pitchers ever in Greg Maddox to an already exceptional pitching staff. Then in July, the Braves traded for power-hitting first baseman Fred McGriff to be in the lineup along with Ron Gant and David Justice, who each had career years in terms of home runs in 1993. So despite the Braves being the two-time defending National League champs, and despite the Braves really upgrading their team with Maddox and McGriff, Atlanta in early August found themselves nine and a half games behind the division leader, the San Francisco Giants, but the Braves wound up overtaking San Fran and won the AL West with a tremendous 104-58 record, while the Giants went home for the postseason despite a 103-win season. What happened after that, I'll get to later on. And at number four, Atlanta's prospects and their ability to develop players. So Atlanta, they made two trips to the World Series in 1991 and 1992. Mainly due to the young core, they came up through the Braves' system. But then as time went on, and then it was time to move on from certain players and play younger players from the farm system, Atlanta, they just didn't call up solid players. They called up very good, even great players. These players included Chipper Jones, Andrew Jones, Ryan Klesko, and Javi Lopez. Atlanta during this period was great at player development. The third thing that comes to mind about the Atlanta Braves in the 90s is that the Braves were so damn good in the 90s. They had incredible success during this decade. Atlanta was credited with an impressive streak of 14 straight division titles from 1991 to 2005. The 94 season was not counted as the MLB season was canceled around mid-August due to a strike as Atlanta was second to Montreal in the AL East at the time. But anyways, additionally, Atlanta from 1993 to 1999 had an impressive four 100-win seasons, including an outstanding 106 wins in 1998, and this doesn't include the shortened 1995 144-game season, where Atlanta was on pace to get at least 100 wins that year. The season was 162 games, but the point is Atlanta seemed to be quite the dominant team in the National League, well, during the regular season at least, as that kind of leads me to the number two thing that comes to mind about the Braves in the 90s, which is Atlanta's postseason losses. So yes, I understand the MLB postseason can be a crapshoot, but to me, the postseason series losses are memorable because of the aforementioned Atlanta's NL dominance, which is why this is number two for me. I was shocked when the powerful 93 Braves lost to the Phillies in the NLCS, and then lost in the NLCS to the Marlins in 1997 and to the Padres in 1998, but both the Marlins and Padres were really good, but it was stunning when Atlanta lost and did not make it to the World Series those years. And then even Atlanta's 96 World Series loss was stunning because Atlanta was up two games to none on the Yankees with both wins coming to New York after Yankees starter Andy Pettit got rocked in Game 1 and then Greg Maddox pitched eight scoreless innings in Game 2. But then seemingly out of nowhere, New York came back and won the series four games to two thanks to a late Jim Leyritz's three-run homer to tie it up in Game 4. And then Pettit who got rocked in Game 1, he was magnificent in Game 5, shutting down the Braves. And then the Yanks won Game 6 and thus won the World Series. But from my point of view, I thought the Braves had the much better position players and the better starting pitching. What I really undervalued was how good the Yankees bullpen was and how the Yankees somehow had a group of players who were clutch and performed during key moments. These two things really enabled New York to have more success than the Braves after the 94 strike. Before I get to number one, just want to mention some honorable mentions. Bobby Cox, who was first the Braves GM putting it all together from 1986 to 1990, then became the manager of the team during those incredible successful Atlanta Braves days in the 90s and 2000s. Then there was John Sherholtz, who was the GM during this period. And then other items that might come to mind about the Braves in the 90s includes owner Ted Turner and Terry Pendleton's 91 MVP season and MVP runner-up season in 1992. But the number one thing that comes to mind about the Atlanta Braves in the 90s is starting pitching. So Atlanta's postseason runs in 91 and 92, the Braves had Hall of Fame starters in John Smoltz and Tom Glavin but a pitcher I really want to talk about is Steve Avery, who has been more talked about than Glavin and Smoltz as he was younger with a higher ceiling, but his career wasn't able to last as long. 
And then of course there's Greg Maddox, as he won three Cy Young awards with the Braves. And then Atlanta, they were able to develop Kevin Millwood, but lost Jason Schmidt to complete a trade that allowed Denny Nagel to be a Brave, as Atlanta's 1998 pitching staff could be argued as the greatest ever. Atlanta starting pitching in the 90s was remarkable. So those are the five things that come to mind when I think about the Atlanta Braves in the 90s. Comment below, tell me what comes to mind when you think about the 90s Braves. I'm curious to know what you think. Lastly, just wanna say thank you for your interest in this video. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much.